Here in the U.S., the so-called big three automakers reported big dips for the first quarter of 2020. General Motors sales fell by 7% in the first quarter, while Fiat Chrysler saw a 10.4% decline, and Ford says the first quarter sales dropped by 12.5% over the same period. So let's take a broader look at the state of the auto industry amid the pandemic with John Quelch, Dean of the Miami Herbert Business School, and Lauren Fix, the car coach. Thank you both for joining me. Lauren, let's start with you. As we talk about the prospects of reopening the economy here in the States, what does this look like for U.S. auto manufacturers? Okay, auto manufacturers are planning to start opening up, depending on the manufacturer and its location, starting in the first week of May all the way into mid-May. But what we have noticed is we're going to see some support for this because just today the president announced that sales are considered essential as well as distribution and manufacturers and suppliers. So that's going to be a major plus. And uh, Dean Quelch, automakers in China ha had their worst ever quarter from the start of January to the end of March. Sales dropped by more than 40 percent in that period, according to the China Association of Auto Manufacturers. I is the industry going to be able to pick back up in the country as restrictions are lifted? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the demand in China has been going down steadily over the past uh, 21 months. Uh, as a result of uh, government restrictions and uh, emission requirements. In, in February uh, of this year, the uh, fall year-on-year -year was 80 percent, and in the last month it was 42 percent in March. So there is a little bit of a hint of a uh, recovery there. Uh, interestingly, uh, Tesla had its best ever month in March uh, after its uh, manufacturing plant came on stream on February the 10th, and they sold uh, over 10,000 cars in China in March for the first time. And, and now, Lauren, I know you've been keeping an eye on this. Uh, how does the, uh, the supply chain situation work with China, having uh, been kind of grinded to a halt? And I, I know what it, it's like 70 percent of parts come out of China. I apologize. You probably know that number better than I do. But w what is that looking at there? Well, interestingly enough, we were talking about Tesla getting online because they were in Shanghai and they were getting support from the Chinese government. But also Volkswagen has 32 of 33 of their plants open and they're producing product as well. So as long as that supply chain continues to produce product, we should be in a better position. The big problem is here in North America. We need the full North America to be functioning and in basically in concert, because we get product out of Canada and assembly plants, as well as Mexico. So Mexico had promised that we would get online a week before the U.S. got their plants back online. Now, we don't know if that's going to happen, because Mexico has put a halt to uh, production right now until the end of the month. There may be some uh, exceptions, but we need to have that pipeline of supply parts going back into the manufacturers, or they can't build a car missing a component. And following up on that manufacturer point, you know, while we talk about sales almost grinding to a halt, you're, you actually uh, are seeing that manufacturing of vehicles is coming back online as things kind of move forward. Is that the case right now? Yeah, I am seeing that uh, actually some of the manufacturers are already up. You've got starting on Monday, Volvo, uh, also Honda. Hyundai has been uh, already put back online. So you're seeing a lot of manufacturers. Poland has allowed Toyota to get online. There's a full list of them. That it's really interesting to see the certain countries are trying to get everyone back to producing products. So I think it's going to be uh, an interesting on-ramping of all these different manufacturers. But believe me, they want to sell cars, and there's going to be incentives to get these cars sold because, you know, people are going to be getting checks, stimulus checks around the world, and they're hoping and praying that they're going to use that to purchase a vehicle. And, and now, Dean Quelch, we actually just mentioned Europe's car market is getting crushed right now. And, and now the German auto lobby is calling on Chancellor Angela Merkel to allow car sales as the country reopens. Uh, with a clear worldwide economic downturn in the offing here, can, can these sales actually come back? Well, it depends a little bit on the uh, opening up of the economy. Um, you know, when you think about it, visiting an automobile dealership to kick the tires, it's not quite as congested an environment as a retail grocery store. Uh, so from that point of view, there should be an opportunity to reopen uh, earlier rather than later. Uh, but a lot of consumers in Germany and elsewhere have just slammed on the brakes. Uh, they're postponing uh, new car purchases. They're postponing trading in their existing car for a uh, pre-owned car. Uh, and they're probably going to be trading down in terms of the uh, overall 
dollar value of the car that they do buy when they get into the uh, dealership to buy. So there is a case for incentives, not just in Germany, but uh, worldwide. And the situation is reminiscent of the uh, situation in 2008, the uh, Great Recession, uh, when uh, the U.S. government initiated the uh, well-known cash for clunkers program uh, to try and motivate folks to uh, trade in their older used vehicles and uh, buy something more recent. Indeed, Quelcha, here in the States, the CEO of Carvana, which sells vehicles, uh, told CNBC he expects these stimulus checks from the government could help vehicle sales. With Americans not really knowing when this whole thing will be over, uh, and frankly, if they're going to be coming back to, to work, are, are they going to actually be spending these $1,200 checks on a big ticket item like a car? I mean, do you see that happening in this economy? Well, I think if that were to happen, it would somewhat defeat the object of the exercise, which is really to uh, give consumers the opportunity to have cash in hand for uh, daily and weekly uh, purchases, notably groceries and other essential items. So using those checks, uh, and by the way, the checks aren't that big in the first place, uh, to subsidize the uh, purchase of a new car, that's pretty unlikely. Um, I just want to point out one other thing, if I may, and that is the lease situation in the United States with uh, so many of the 22 million people who are now uh, filed for uh, unemployment mm. uh, benefits. Uh, these people uh, have a lot of right. leased vehicles. Uh, the leases will come due. They won't be able to pay the uh, lease uh, monthly fees. Right. Uh, so that's going to create another problem in the used car sector that will drag down new car prices as well. Dean John Quelch and Lauren Fix, thank you so much for joining us today to discuss this important issue. Thank you. Thank you.